let's try that again since um, I tried to rush ahead earlier today. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. May God be with you. And also with you. There you go. <laughs> well, we do have a call to worship this morning, so I'm going to turn this over to uh, George and the choir to lead us in this call to worship. And you can stay seated for that, or you can stand, whichever you want. We are going to have an opening prayer and our first hymn after that, so that's up to you.
bulletin, if you will, join with me. Let us pray. Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Our Psalter is number 749 in that red hymnal. Let's turn there together. And after we get there, George and the choir, they're going to help us learn how to sing uh, that refrain. And I know it says on here that this is 1 through 7 and verse 15. That's actually all that's on this page. So we don't even have to look for it. We're lucky that it's all right there for us. So George, if you will. Okay. So I, the ref I'm going to play the melody of the refrain and the choir will sing it. And then... We'll all sing it together, and then we'll go into it, and everywhere you see the red R, we'll sing. So, this is the refrain. <laughs> Oh, prayer concerns. 
concerns. Well, we um, celebrated birthdays of two more grandchildren yesterday. I think we've got them all covered for the year now. Everybody's had a birthday, all the grandkids. But we got to see them all again, and that was truly a joy. Um, we saw the 16-month-old in a pair of skates yesterday. That kind of scared me a little bit. But uh, thankfully, Daddy was on the so. <laughs> I said, before four months after you start walking, it might be a bit early for the skates. <laughs> All right, well, prayer concerns. Well, look at this. Well, prayers for all those who continue to um, clean up and rebuild or, or uh, from fires and storms that have hit here in our, our area and in our state. And prayers for those who continue to... Um, Need our prayers all across um, the international uh, Turkey and Syria and prayers for Ukraine and Lord you know all the places right now that need prayers all around this world of ours. Yes. I'm just having kind of a heavy heart today for people that even with minor surgery that they're facing anxiety about it. I have a friend preparing for cataract surgery and that should be she's having more anxiety than So, so prayers for those with anxiety, no matter what it is they're worried or concerned about. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And especially for that friend. <laughs> yes. Um, George is having a problem with his knee. I think we need to lift him up. All right. Prayers for George. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And my knee is also passed over. All right. For Michelle's <laughs> knees as well. Lord, in your mercy. If we get truthful in this room, I guarantee you there's more of us. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! All right. So, uh, yeah, prayers for joints uh, abound for all of us. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Hmm. I'll put my dad on there. Prayers for his hip. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. All right. Any others? Um, and continued prayers for David's mom. And, uh, of course, his dad, because this affects him as well, and, and David and them, Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. All those on our prayer list, we have a kind of long prayer list right now, so for all of those. And, um, Charles, would you like to announce what you need prayers for right now? Uh, <laughs> I got a good report from the doctor. They said I could resume all activities, so I'm back to my old self in the he actually, I was sitting next to him when he asked the cardiologist if, you know, he would uh, approve that, and he said yes, so if I hadn't heard it with my own ears, I might not would have believed it, <laughs> but he said yes, he can go on the Liberia trip, he told him when, how soon it's coming up, so, y'all, I need to share that. Um, Charles was supposed to see the cardiologist, Dr. Valvali, for the first time since we come home from the hospital. The, uh, well, Dr. Valvali might need our prayers right now because he's, he's at home. He's not well right now. He, he might be better by today. So he did Charles's visit by phone. And he is still surprised and amazed, as am I, and Charles as well, that the ultrasound photos of his heart post all of this happening does not show a heart that's even had a heart attack. It doesn't even show that he's had the heart attack that he's had. They were so, because again, he was in where he needed to be, right there where they could act immediately. This man who coded four different times, who was had CPR, who defibrillator was used uh, four different times on him, no signs at all. So, y'all, how about we be grateful that right here in this church, we have two of those life-saving units right here in this church, those defibrillators. And if they are used promptly, um, even in an event like that, you know, they can be life-saving. And not just life-saving, they can even be, you make all the difference in, in your health after that as well. So, we are ever so grateful. And it just, again, 
it took my breath away from me for a minute, you know, when he said that the other day, and I just, you know, had a little praise party there on the couch with tears and, and praise to be so joyful over that. Truthfully, he is healthier to go now than he was when he went in May. We just didn't know it. And so we are very thankful that this didn't happen while he was there when he went before. We didn't know. So, whew, yay God for being in the middle of all of it. Well, let's join our hearts in prayers. Unless anyone's got one I have, that I've missed. Is anybody? From all those who are still recovering from surgeries and on our list for various reasons. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we want to add to our prayers all those who are still traveling, um, those families who are getting those last-minute trips um, done before the school year begins, for our teachers who are winding up their vacation time and are already preparing for the school year to come. Lord, we pray for them. We lift them up now. For the parents who are just dreading having to get their children up out of the bed and and get them ready for the school and the ones that can hardly wait for the bus to pull up in the yard. <laughs> Lord, we pray for all of them as well. Mm -hmm. For um, all those who are heading off to college for the first time, we certainly think of Sarah right now. She's preparing to move to a dorm and to start her college career. Lord, we just thank you for all the ways that you are moving in our lives, that you are present right when we need you. And Lord, help us to remember to stay connected to you in those times when something's not going on, when it's not a joy, when it's not a concern, when it's just an everyday. Help us to stay connected to you in those times as well so that we grow ever closer, so that we put down deeper roots of faith in you so that we are prepared for the worst of times as well as the best. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We pray all of this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I believe we have some lovely music coming, so I'm going to be back the way.
You know, these seem like the coolest glasses when you buy them because you can change the look of them all the time. Unfortunately, the magnets don't hold as strong as I need them because I am a big klutz and I'm constantly hitting and knocking these off. Um, <laughs> so uh, I will be losing these probably shortly and they'll just be clear again. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, you know, we've been doing um, bumper sticker theology off and on uh, lately. And today we are supposed to look at um, God is my co pilot, or Jesus is my co pilot. I know you've probably seen that bumper sticker out there before. I want to ask you something. How many of you? Um, maybe growing up when a parent told you to do it, or maybe kids have done it to you, or you've seen it like I have on various sitcoms. This seems to be one of those themes that pops up on um, every show, especially where they look at, at families you know, with, with children, no matter who's raising them. You know, you find this episode usually where a parent or a babysitter or someone tells a child, to do a chore, and they don't do it, and then they get told again and again, and finally this adult person shows them how to do it. You know what I'm talking about here? They show them how to do it, and the kid will whine and say, I don't know, I don't think I've got it yet, show me again, or sometimes it's even an adult. If any of you have ever watched the show, Everybody Loves Raymond, that still comes on and reruns, or... Uh, King of Queens or, or Blackish, any of these shows have had episodes where someone was trying to get them to do a chore, clean up your room, clean up the kitchen, clean up the bathroom, whatever, and they watch the other, well, I don't know how to, you know, and they keep watching the other person do it until it's all done, and then they're like, oh, okay, I got it now, but somebody else did the whole chore. Well, we're going to look at our gospel lesson this morning and see if that is, you know, does God do, does Jesus do all the work? Is that how that works? Do we talk Jesus into doing, is God the, um, is God in charge? Or are we, or, let's, let's look at this. So we are in the 14th chapter of Matthew. And we are starting at verse 13. And I believe it goes yeah, through 21. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. I want to stop right there for just a second. When we first began this series of Bumper Sticker Theology, the very first one we did was I can do all things through a verse taken out of context. Exactly. So, first thing we need to do is find out what is the context for this particular scripture, don't we? Now, when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The context of this particular story that we're reading today is that John the Baptist had just been beheaded. Jesus had just learned about this. The disciples found out and they had gone and retrieved his body and had buried it, and then had gone to Jesus to tell him what had happened. And when he learned, he withdrew in his grief by himself to mourn. To mourn, to process, to connect with the Father and the Spirit. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. Well, does this sound like a co-pilot kind of thing, or is this a leader? Someone who sees a need and deals with it, and even teaches in doing so. Aren't we learning from that today, that there are times when we need to draw away by, in a quiet place by ourselves and connect and, and rest and have that time that we need? And then there are times when even in the midst of our own suffering, when the need is great to have compassion. So we're still being taught there. 
When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the village and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing but five loaves and two fish. Charles, you were right. I got them wrong this morning. Y'all bear witness to this. I had confused the loaves and the fishes this morning, so I am telling my husband in front of the whole group here that he was right and I was wrong. So if he ever says that I've never said that before, y'all can bear witness to the fact. I'm turning this on my good side. Y'all notice that I'm doing that wrong. <laughs> so they had, again, how many of what? Five loaves and two fish. And he said, uh, give them, and he said, bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides the women and the children. So think of the enormous numbers that we are talking about here. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to, to God. Let my water get away from me. Mm. So it sounds to me a lot like Jesus is the one leading here. Does it sound like to you that Jesus is the one leading? If we're looking at this scripture through the lens of who is the co-pilot here, I don't think it's Jesus, do you? What do we know about Jesus? Jesus is the good shepherd, right? We are the sheep. What does the good shepherd do if one of us wanders astray? Stop everything to go and find us and not leave us wandering around on our own, getting lost or in trouble, as we often do. Jesus will come to look for us. I love that in this scripture, when, when the disciples are looking at this scarcity kind of issue, it's like they see this is all we've got, right? I mean, Jesus is right there with them. But they think all that they have are these five, five fish and two loaves. And they have forgotten whose presence they are in. Jesus. The one who can do so much with so little. It's that scarcity theology that we often think of today. We forget who is our God? We got worried just a few years ago about toilet paper, scarcity theology, and people would buy it anytime time they saw it. If they didn't need it, they wouldn't leave it for anybody else because they might need it. We get so worried about having little. But when we take the little that we have and we place it in Jesus' hands, everything changes. Everything changes. Changes. Look what can be done with that little when that happens. We follow Jesus. The whole of this gospel story is about following Jesus. Not us leading Jesus or Jesus walking beside. It's us following Jesus. We are to be followers. Jesus is to take the lead. I wonder if this was, you know, we don't know how Jesus did this, right? We don't know if Jesus somehow miraculously made these little bit of food turn into a lot of food, or if the miracle was more when the crowd saw that they were willing to hand Jesus their little bit, and Jesus was giving God thanks for it and sharing it with all of them. It's kind of a stone soup 
event occurred. Y'all remember that story, the stone slew, right? I'm not going to retell it this morning. But if you don't remember it, um, someone came to town hungry, right, and put a stone in a pot of water and started a fire. And then when he started talking about how wonderful that was going to be and delicious, people started to bring things to add to it when he would hint, right, that it'd be a little bit better. And so people who were worried about scarcity began to share. Maybe it's something we all need to remember, that with God as our leader, we don't have to worry about our little bit. We can put those worries, those concerns, what we have in the hands of God and trust that it will be enough. Y'all, there is enough of everything in the world right now. No one should have to be hungry. Anyone who is hungry today is not hungry because God did not provide. They are hungry when we get worried. When humankind decides, one, we either want it for ourselves, or two, we, we think there's not enough, and then we, we hoard it and don't share. And there are countries where this happens. And you know, sometimes it happens here too. I don't mean here in the church, but I mean here in the United States as well, where we see something and we think we need a lot of it and we forget that others need these resources as well if we trust God with what we have and what is available everyone would have enough y'all hear what I'm saying if we trust God everyone would have enough <laughs> do you know how I know this well how did this story end How many fish? How many loaves? Thank y'all, because I still can't ever remember. I never remember which it is. Never. As many times I've read it, I always feel confused. Even with that little bit, how many baskets of leftovers did they take up? Twelve disciples took up twelve baskets full. This week, I turned over to um, preach the story. I wanted to hear... I don't always do this, but every now and then I like to hear what Leonard Sweet, he likes to look at the symbols and the signs and all of that. But I just wanted to hear what he had to say about this particular passage this morning. And it, this is kind of, um, I don't know that I've got it exactly word for word, but this pretty much came from him. He said, Jesus has them gather the leftovers. None are left behind. None may be lost. None are, are ignored. Mm, Y'all think about that. Apply that in everything in our lives. They're left. He gathers the leftovers. None are left behind. None may be lost. None ignored. Bring them all. And then he says, we are all basket cases. Hang on to that. I like that. Thank you, Dr. Leonard Sweet. We are all basket cases, and Jesus is the Easter basket that collects us all. How about that? Jesus is the Easter basket that collects us all. Broken hearts, broken world, we are all fed as we feed. We are to follow Jesus. Jesus, if you need a, a, a pilot analogy, then Jesus is the pilot. Let Jesus fly, fly the plane. Let Jesus lead the way. We follow Jesus, the shepherd. The sheep follow the shepherd. It's in here over and over again. We follow Jesus. Hmm. And we are fed as we feed. If we want to be fed, then we feed others. We feed bellies. We feed hearts. We feed souls. We feed the good news of Jesus Christ to each other. As we prepare for communion, we need to open our hymn book to, thank you, page 629.
And as we sing this, you satisfy the hungry heart. Why don't you just process what it means to follow Jesus? That is the heart of it, isn't it? Isn't that our good news? Is that we do not have to figure it out ourselves. We do not have to scramble and worry. If all of us would follow Jesus, there would be an abundance of everything, an abundance of love, an abundance of mercy, an abundance of grace, an abundance of food. We would never be without any of those things if we follow Jesus. Let God be the pilot. Let God lead. Y'all, it's good news. It's very good news. So, so we'll sing verses 1, 2, and 5. Did you hear that? 1, 2, and 5. Mm -hmm. We have broken your law. 
We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Now, I believe you're going to need to turn over to page 17 for the musical setting. If you uh, want the prepackaged elements, they are here at the door as you come in and feel free to, to move and get those. If you would like to come up for intention, you can do that. That is entirely up to you. If you're going to use the ones you pick up there, when I go to bless these in a little while, you'll hold those up and we will bless them all at one time. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image, breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. for the whole world 
the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Prayer after receiving is found on page 11. Let's pray. Did I get the wrong page number? Yeah, I'm on the wrong page. I'm just the right page. I'm just on the wrong page. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Y'all, I am still uh, all over. The, I am still trying to work with glasses that I cannot keep in just the right spot. I've got to get them adjusted some more so that I can actually see what I'm looking at and uh, not be leading y'all in the wrong direction in doing so. All right. Um, 
Our closing hymn is 593, Here I Am, Lord. Let's all stand and sing together. George, anything specific? No, we won't do it all. Okay.